Hi students, once again I am meeting you to discuss about the lesson Organisms and Populations. In that we were talking about population interaction. That too, that is between different species, interspecific interactions. In that interspecific interactions we have studied so far, amensalism, mutualism, commensalism and also competition. Now the next type, interspecific interaction, parasitism. Here too there are two species. One just benefited and another one is harmed. That's why you put the symbol plus the gate for one species and minus the last for another species. So it is one of the harmful interactions. See that one, it is a kind of harmful interactions between two different species wherein one species is called as the parasite, another one is called as the host. Normally, the parasite lives at the expense of the host, getting everything from the host world. It derives food, shelter and production from the host. Okay, now we have different types of classification for parasites. One method of classification is Types of parasites based on the nature of causative organism. Some parasites are in the form of virus. Some parasites are in the form of microbes. Some parasites are in the form of, you see that one that is plant parasites. Some others in the form of animal parasites. Now, so we have number one, viral parasites. Example, plant and animal parasites. Actually, viral parasites. It is actually what we have, plant and animal viruses. They cause diseases. Here, viruses. Both plant and animal viruses are acting as parasites only. They cannot survive outside the body of the host. They can live. They can live only within the body of the host. Then microbial parasites, the microbes, like the protozoa, the bacteria and fungi parasites. Then phytoparasites, these are nothing but the plant parasites living only in the plants, causing damage only to the plant bodies. Then zooparasites, these are animal parasites. We have different types of animal parasites, ecton endoparasites. Say an example of platyhelminthes, the goma, pepo, the nematodes, the roundworm, the pinworm, etc. And also the arthropods. Some arthropods, you see the ticks and mice. These ticks and mice are ectoparasites. That's about the first classification. The second one also, based on the location, where are they present? Either outside the body of the organism or inside the body of the organism. Now we have different methods that are adapted for the classification of parasites. One type I mentioned about the nature of the causative organism. The second method of classification, types of parasites based on the location in the body. Some parasites inhabit or attach to the body surface of the host. They are called ectoparasites. They are called ectoparasites. For example, the head louse. And also we have the leech. An analyte attaches to the body surface and sucking the blood. Even mosquito, the blood bug. What we call the bed bug, we can see. They are all ectoparasites. And those parasites which live within the body of the host, they are all endoparasites. Okay, for example, the roundworm take home their form in the alimentary tract. And we have the plasmodium found in the blood. We have the filarial worm found in the lymphatic system. Now, what are the examples? The endoparasites usually live in the alimentary tract. For example, Ascaris. Or we have tapo, or any other form. And body cavities, that is in the siloamic cavities, various organs, then blood, say an example of the malarial parasite lives in the blood, or any other tissues of the body. Even the filarial worm, what I mentioned about, it is found in the lymph vessels or the lymphatic system. That's about one method, another method, we can say one method, that's a second method of classification. The third method based on the degree of parasitism, we can have permanent and temporary parasites. Let's see. Now let's continue the lesson. 
So now there is another category for classification of parasites. Types of parasites based on the degree of parasitism. Number one, temporary parasites. They spend only part of their life cycle as parasites. For example, in the case of Glaucidium larva, this is the name of the larva for one freshwater mussel, a molluscan animal, Anadonia. The adult is a free living one. Anadonia, the adult is a free living one. Whereas a parasite is exhibited by its larva. Its larva is a parasite. The parasite attaches itself to the gills of fish. To the gills of fish. After completing the life cycle, once it reaches what we call the adult stage, it becomes free. It leads to a free living life. Now, the second one, permanent parasites. These parasites spend their life cycle completely dependent on the host. Without host, they cannot survive. For example, there is Plasmodium, the malarial parasite needs two hosts. One is female anaphilus mosquito, another one what we call the human body. Then Entamoeba, it lives in the large intestine. Then Roundworm, it lives in the intestine of man as caries. Then Pinworm, it is also living in the intestine of man. Now we call the binomial Enterobius vermicularis. Then Tapeworm, the Tinea solium. This is an intestinal parasite. So, round boom, pin boom, tape boom, these are all intestinal parasites. Plasmodium, the blood parasite. Entamoeba is also an intestinal parasite living in the large intestine. Now, that's all about we have the parasitism. We have to go for the next one, predation. Now, let's take the last interspecific interaction that is predation. Here a represented plus and minus. The meaning for that one, there are two partners. One partner normally just gets benefit while the other is harmed. Suppose you are taking line and deal, the line gets benefited. Whereas behind the deal gets lost something, it's given the life also. So anyway, it is a form of interaction where one animal kills another animal. Okay, mainly for the food. So, like parasitism, predation is also taking part or is an important part in what is called population dynamics, maintaining the population. Now, though they are together maintaining what is called the population dynamics, in one point they are differing from each other. So, what is the difference between predation and parasitism? If you are taking a predator, the predator tends to be large in size, for example, lion, and what we have the prey, that is the deer. So, predator tends to be larger than its prey, if you are taking lion and what we have the deer. Lion is larger than the deer. And it catches its prey from without, just outside, without, within. Here the meaning is without and within, either within the body or outside the body. So, it catches its prey from without, just outside. That's the meaning. Suppose you are taking a parasite. The parasite is smaller than its host. Say an example of man and malarial parasite. The malarial parasite is microscopic and host human is large. And it consumes what we call it. Consumes the host from within. Within the body of the host it lives and just actually consumes the food available inside. Even harming also. So one is without, another one is within. So the predator is larger than the prey, whereas you have the parasite is smaller than the host and consumes it, consuming the host within. That's about the differences between this parasite. Now by funding activities, the predators can be regarded as generalized or specialized. What are specialized predators? The specialized predators are those normally adapted to what we call hunt only a few specific species. Specialized, that is, the predators are those adapted to just actually hunt only a few specific species. That's about that one. If you're taking a relationship between lion and then what do you call the deer? So the lion and deer exhibit what is called predation, that is, relationship. 
in that one line is acting as separate and the layer is acting as separate. Okay. So what is its importance of predation? Let's see. Now we have to continue predation. The examples what I mentioned line and day they exhibit predator prey relationship where line is what we have the predator and we have the day is the prey. What is the importance of predation and significance of predation? Now this type of interaction helps the transfer of energy up the trophic levels, the foot levels in the foot chain. We have a number of trophic levels in the foot chain. Now this is responsible for the transfer of energy at the trophic levels. Okay, and it is an essential strategy. That is the transfer of energy is an essential strategy in population regulation. That's all about what we have the predation and its significance. We have to go for the different kinds of uh, inter-specific interactions in a natural in the form of table of compound. Okay. Now let's collectively just do the analysis of two species interactions, what I studied so far. There are six different types of interactions. Number one, amen salison. We are taking two species. One, there is a loss and there is no loss, no gain for another part. The most powerful animal are large organisms inhibits the growth of other lower animals. What is in order? The examples is the different cattle drag, which are being destroyed by the foot of the elephant. Now, mutualities. I represent plus plus. So, both are mutually beneficial. So, interaction favorable to both and obligatory. Obligatory means permanent. It's always permanent. As said already, the sea anemone and helmet crab, and so many examples. So, an example of between crocodile and bird, the proper bird. Now, common service. There is a gain for one species, no loss or gain for another species. So, population one, the commensal, the one which exhibits commensalism, benefits. While the two, that is what is called the host, is not affected. So, there is a gain for one partner and there is no loss or gain for another partner. Suckerfish and shop. So, suckerfish is normally called as remora. Remora. This is the name of the sucker fish. It's normally it attaches itself to the body of shore so that it is being carried away to different places and as a result it gets its food. That is a relationship. Just come and search. Sucker fish gets benefited, whereas a shore is neither benefited nor harmed. Then competition. Here what is happening? Last for both the partners because of competition. Now, direct inhibition of each species by other. Both are attacking each other. So, there is a loss for both the partners. For example, birds in a tree compete what we have the squirrels for nuts and seeds. What is in our other examples? So, two more have to represent that is what we have parasitism and predation. Now, the analysis of other two types of interactions, parasitism. One partner or one species gets benefited and there is a loss for the second species. What is the nature? Population one, the parasite, generally smaller than the population two, the host. The examples, we have different types of parasites, endoparasites present within the body of humans like ascaris, tapo, present in the human digestive tract. Next one, predation. Here also there is a gain for one partner, namely the predator, and there is a loss for another partner, namely that is a prey. So in this one, population one, we have the predator, which is normally larger than population two, the prey. We have already seen lion predatory on deer. So predatory on deer, just a feeding on. That is the deer, and it was a spray. That's all about the various interactions between the organisms. With that, I concluded the lesson that is organisms and populations. We have to go to the next lesson that is what is called biodiversity and its conservation. We will see that one in the next class. Till then, goodbye. Thank you.